Last Saturday, one of our most dedicated and courageous presidents gave the nation his views on the forthcoming Democratic Convention. Inasmuch as Mr. Truman's remarks were directed at me, I am taking this opportunity to respond to his statement. First, Mr. Truman suggested that I step aside as a candidate in 1960. In response, let me say, I do not intend to step aside at anyone's request. I was, I was the only candidate to risk my chances in all the primaries, the only one to visit every state. I have encountered and survived every kind of hazard and opposition, and I do not intend to withdraw my name now on the eve of the convention. Secondly, Mr. Truman asserted that the convention would be controlled or prearranged. In response, let me say, to the extent that I have anything to do with it, it will be an open convention. As every convention of our broadly based party is open, even though our candidate has been selected on the first ballot, in every single convention but one since 1932, including the 1948 convention, which nominated Mr. Truman. To me, an open convention means one reflecting the free will of delegates, freely elected in contested primaries and in state conventions. But based on my observation of him in 1952 and in 1956 and last Saturday, Mr. Truman regards an open convention as one which studies all the candidates, reviews their records, and then takes his advice. <laughs> Nevertheless, I share his hope that our convention will consider all prospective nominees, including all those he named and some he did not name. And I hope, and I hope that Mr. Truman will attend the convention, and should I be the nominee, I hope he will support me in the fall. Third, Mr. Truman accused my supporters of using improper pressure on the delegates. Not one concrete example has ever been named. I do not want any votes that have been pressured. And the facts of the matter are that my votes come from the primaries, where I entered all that were open, and from rank and file Democrats who voted for me in state conventions. The prospective candidates Mr. Truman named could have entered those primaries. Some of them were traveling widely all year and supporting my primary opponent, but not one of them entered a primary on his own. The other candidates also had the same opportunity as I to present their record and views to the individual delegates and state conventions. Many of them have already been properly sized up, to use Mr. Truman's words, and they have their own backers who are not, I am told, without influence and the opportunity to pressure delegates. Fourth and finally, the heart of Mr. Truman's objection, it seems, is his question as to whether I am ready for the country or the country is ready for me in terms of maturity and experience. Let me say this as objectively as I can. I did not undertake lightly to seek the presidency. It is not a prize or a normal object of ambition. It is the greatest office in the world. And I came to that conclusion that I could best serve the United States in that office after 18 years in the service of this country, first as a naval officer in World War II, and for the past 14 years as a member of the Congress. In the last 20 years, I have traveled in nearly every continent and country, and in the last few years, in every state of the Union. More than any other active candidate, more than any active contender now or in history, to the best of my knowledge, my writings, addresses, and activities in foreign and domestic affairs 
speak for themselves. And I am willing to let our party and nation be the judge of my experience and ability. But this much ought to be understood. If we are to establish a test for the presidency, whereby 14 years in major elective office is insufficient experience, then all but three of the 10 possibilities mentioned by Mr. Truman last Saturday must be ruled out. All but a handful of our presidents since the very founding of this nation should be ruled out. And every president elevated to that office in the 20th century should have been ruled out, including the three great Democratic presidents, Woodrow Wilson, Franklin Roosevelt, and Harry Truman himself.